me now to discuss this is former federal Labor MP Michael Danby and current federal Liberal MP or Senator rather James Patterson. Thank you both for your time. Evening Sherry. Look Michael I want to start with you. You were one of Rudd's crucial backers when he was trying to overthrow Beasley for the leadership um, and you know you would have been a, a first-hand witness to his to, to the way he ingratiated himself with the media at the time the media he's now calling for an inquiry into well he he was uh, ingratiating himself with a lot of people including me his colleagues were uh, convinced by him um, he was a, a, i think he was a different person then uh, especially this period of uh, lockdown he seems to have become very uh, intense but um, Pembo's article is hilarious actually it reminds me very much of the time he was cultivating everyone the the Murdoch editors uh, he knew personally arms around Malcolm Farr etc um, look uh, and that was justified he, he it helped him get into office but uh, this uh, campaign against uh, uh, news and against Sky. I mean, you have Conroy, Reese, Richo. Um, I don't see that many people uh, balancing uh, programs on the uh, on the ABC. If we're going to have an inquiry uh, in in Canberra, run by of all people Sarah Hanson Young, um, we, we should be doing it into um, Twitter and Facebook and Google. Uh, if you look at the, that um, Netflix show, The Social Dilemma, there's widespread um, community support for something like that. But um, to do a jihad against um, uh, one organisation that you claim now doesn't favour your point of view is, uh, in, in my view, a mistake. You were cultivating it then. Relax, Kevin. Get to behave a bit more like Julia Gillard, you know, and, and be a bit more statesmanlike. James Patterson, John Howard's response to Kevin Rudd's, you know, when, when there was a change of um, editorial coverage, is incomparable. Uh, David Pempathy reveals in his piece at as well that he had some correspondence with Kevin Rudd uh, when he, you know, after the election when, when Howard, sorry, correspondence with John Howard when he had lost that 2007 election and he reveals that, Rudd, that Howard wrote to him to say, needless to say, I was disappointed that your newspaper went over to the dark side after such a long and positive association. That, as they say, is the nature of things in a democracy. I mean, you can't even compare that response from the forward Prime Minister, from John Howard, to how Kevin Rudd is behaving now. Shari, what a contrast. Uh, not only has John Howard distinguished himself in his post-Prime Ministerial career in the dignified way that he has handled himself, in contrast to some other former Prime Ministers, Kevin Rudd at the top of that list, uh, but what a classy way to handle himself uh, in a difficult time in his life. Not only did John Howard lose uh, office in 2007, he lost his own seat, and he no doubt would have felt very sad about uh, his association with the Daily Telegraph ending in the way it did, um, and he handled it in an incredibly classy way. But D David Pemberthy's piece was such a witty, sardonic uh, insight into uh, the Rudd pursuit of News Corporation in Australia. Uh, in fact, it really comes across uh, in many ways like a jilted lover or a crazy ex-girlfriend um, in the way that he's pursuing them now. <laughs> I mean, he, he really was... Uh, I mean, uh, Penbo says himself, it, it's almost as if a restraining order needed to be taken out at the time when they're on good terms, let alone now. Um, I, I don't think Kevin Rudd is doing his uh, stature and his reputation and his uh, position in history much good with this very sad, sad campaign. Yeah, absolutely. Now, look, I want to move to China. It's something you both take a deep interest in. Um, this week, China announced extraordinary high tariffs on Australia wine, you know, between 100 and 200 per cent. This effectively doubles to triples uh, the cost of wine in China, and it means that Australian wine is, is virtually unviable in China. It's already had a severe impact on Australian businesses. And this, of course, follows massive tariffs on our beef, on our barley, a range of other unofficial bans as well. Then, then also we had this week, you know, quite, um, you know, Josh Frydenberg and the Prime Minister, you know, not necessarily a, a peace offering, but just some sensible uh, statements about working with China. And then the, the Chinese embassy issued a list of 14 grievances it has with our government. Michael, you know, why is China singling out Australia here and what do you think our response should be to this? Stay cool like we are, um, keep trading with them, keep selling them iron ore, but this is doing China immense damage all around the world. When there are articles by Richard McGregor in the Financial Times, uh, this is creating sovereign risk for China. 
people around the world, Mrs Merkel with her Volkswagen plant in Xinjiang, should start worrying about sovereign risk. Um, you do treaties with them like we have. You have contracts on lobsters and barley and, and wine and they... Uh, Pull the plug on all of them. This is not to do with uh, a modern country. This is uh, communism. This is a, a, a G dictatorship uh, that has changed, not Australia. So Australia should just keep calm trading with them, but we can't give in. This first opportunity we do will be in severe trouble. But I just want to focus on the wine for a second, uh, Shari. There's one exception to uh, the wine, and that is um, former... Uh, amb Australian ambassador to China, Jeff Raby, who's yes. got mates' rates from his mate uh, Xi. Now, in Stalin's time, there was a very famous person called Armand Hammer who made billions by getting a, 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 a cosmetics uh, concession from uh, the then Soviets. Uh, this bloke's uh, uh, got mates' rates from dictator Xi. It's outrageous that um, he uh, is getting advantages for being um, a faithful megaphone for, uh, uh, for China. Well, we can only assume that's why he's only got a, a tariff of 100% instead of 200% on the lower end of the scale. Unbelievable. Um, and that's according to a, a tweet, I think, by an ABC journalist. Um, James Patterson, look, there's now an attempt in the, in the discussion in Australia about this to blame the Australian government, even the media, mm -hmm. people like us at Sky, uh, for failing to manage the relationship with China. Do you buy this argument? Well, Shari, we sometimes have this very silly debate in Australia that if only we changed our tone a little bit, if only we had a little bit more nuance, that all of a sudden our relationship with China would dramatically improve. Um, that theory, that nuanced school of international relations has been absolutely blown apart the other week when the Chinese embassy handed over that list of 14 grievances. And the test for the Nuance Brigade is to go through that list of 14 grievances and say which, if any of those things, they would be willing to sacrifice in the quest of a better relationship with China. Exactly. Uh, is it a free press that they'd be willing to sacrifice? Is it the right of members of parliament to have freedom of speech? Is it protections against foreign interference in our political system? Is it uh, control over our own foreign investment framework? I mean, is it allowing Huawei back into our 5G system? Uh, unless they can go through that list and nominate which things they would be willing to do to improve the relationship with China, then they shouldn't be listened to as serious participants in the debate. Because the reality is what we're being asked to do by the Chinese Communist Party, no self-respecting government, Labor or Liberal, uh, left or right, could ever agree to. And that is just the reality of where we are at the moment. Well, well, look, I know I that feels... I just want to check on that point with Michael because, you know, James is right, those, and, and I know you would agree, Michael, but those 14 grievances are considered by the Australian government to be issues of national security and they are non-negotiable. But, Michael, do you think, and I've got to be quick because I'm running out of time here, but do you think the current Federal Labor Party would have the same position or, or do you have some concerns there? Well, you can... You can only go by their record, Shari, and, and, and at every point, um, the, uh, Wong and Albo have uh, backed the federal government so far. So, to their credit, I would be a bit more active on Hong Kong and the Uyghurs and the South China Sea than they are, but um, on the serious issues uh, in the Senate and in the House... Uh, uh, James and the Liberals can rely on them because Australia is being attacked and they understand the policy change is from China, not from us. All right. Michael Danby, James Patterson, thank you both very much for your time.